Right. Looking at page 57, question six. Now, the good thing about question six, this is a past year test question. All right, so it's a good practice example for the quantities for, for concrete because it more or less encompasses all the principles I've tried to bring in in concrete. So good revision for a test. All right, let's move on from concrete to structural steel. Now, structural steel, in my view, is one of, if not the most easiest of all the quantifying uh, structures. Uh, and as we progress, you progress, you'll probably realize why. All right, so let's look at it. This specification covers structural steel work generally for buildings, other structures, except cranes, road, and rail bridges. All right, design drawings, the engineer's drawings will include <clears throat> a general arrangement of the proposed structure indicating all structural member sizes and special connections will be sufficiently comprehensive to allow the detailing of all connections. No dimensions shall be obtained from a drawing by scaling. Um, computation of, all right, before that measurement and payment, basic principles, steel members and plate work will be measured by mass of steel. This is the main thing. You'll, you'll see that in a moment. Everything is reduced to a mass. If you recall the previous subsection in concrete, we had different units. We had area, we had volume, we had number of bricks, we had cubic meters, all those kind of things. But when it comes to steel work, there's only one unit mass of steel. You'll see that as we progress. The mass of steel work will be calculated based on the nominal mass per unit length stated in SAIC steel tables. Otherwise, the mass will be based on steel density of that value, 73, sorry, 7850 kg per meter cube. Now, I want you to commit that to memory because this is a constant that we're going to be using. All right, no deductions will be made for holes and fasteners, no deductions. Gussets will be measured on the basis of the minimum enclosing rectangle. I don't propose that. Remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to quantify a tender document. And tenders, from my experience that I've adjudicated, boils down or comes down to the last cent. Now, if you take a gusset plate of that shape, and say, no, let's reduce it to minimum rectangle. You're basically saying, there's that piece, which is here, and we're including it in the tender document or the price in the tender document, all right? So there's money attached to this, which is sadly can get into quite large when you start to quantify large stresses uh, for a huge structure, and it has a direct impact on the final tender value. Now, this may not make sense to you in a moment, uh, right now, but in a moment when we start to quantify things, you'll get an idea of what I'm trying to get at. Right, now, let's look at this. You can read that, but what I want you to see is this part. Everything is reduced to one value, which is the weight in tonnage. All right, you've got supply and fabrication, you've got supply and of the steel work, your delivery to site, normal loads, erection site, corrosion protection, what's that? That is basically protecting the steel from rusting. Quickest method to paint it and a little bit more better, but costly is galvanizing, hot tip galvanizing. All right, so we're gonna talk about, or we're gonna put something in our, in our bill of quantities with regard to corrosion protection. But once again, all of them reduces to tonnage value. All right, so let's look at this example. All right, now let's try and understand what we're looking at. All right, let's look at this. All right, so we've got, all joints are six millimeter continuous fillet welds. All steel is grade 300W, all right? All gusset plates are 10 millimeters thick. So here's our gusset plates and they're all 10 millimeters thick. There are 13 trusses in total, which are required for, let's exclude, exclude that, there's something not right there. All right, I think I took this out from past year exam paper, but anyway. 
Let's move on. Odd bracing is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, 8 kg per meter angle sections. All right, so let's look at that one for now. Let's understand that. Because if you don't understand the drawing, you can't, can't quantify it accurately. So we've got angle section in this shape here. All right. And they're saying it's 100 by 100. And for one meter, it's 8 kgs. All right. 152, 152, 18 kgs per meter angle sections top and side cords, all right? All right, next one, 152, 152, 18 kgs per meter. What are, we, what are we looking at here? We're looking at similar structure or similar shape, bigger. And we go in there and we're saying, this one is 152, 152. And as a meter progresses, it's looking at 18 kgs, all right? The next one, two number, right? So two number means that's not a misprint. There's two of them. If you look at the sketch here, it shows you there's two on section XX. There's XX there. All right, 140, 60, 20 kgs per meter, back to back channels, which makes up the bottom chord. All right, so we've just seen what the side chords is. Here's your side, here's your top, here's your side. All right, here's your bottom, okay? And this will be your bracings across there. All right, so your bottom chord is given as that shape. And that's 140, this is 60. And per meter, it's 20 kgs. All right, so this particular truss is made of these three pieces or these three shapes of steel sections, right? With the bottom one having it placed back to back. All right, so you've got two of them and all of these two rest on top of it. All right, so now we've seen or we can see what this truss is composed of. All right, and lastly, <clears throat> the service preparation specification is as follows. Sandblast to SA two and a half, shop prime with zinc galvanized six, two clothes chlorine rubber to be applied on site. Now, that I will show you how to accommodate in your bill of quantities. Easiest thing, easiest marks ever. All right, so let's start with quantities for this particular truss. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at this truss. What are we given here? That's two meters, we got an angle. We know this is the bottom. We know this is now the top and the side cords. Same material and the bracing is a different material. All right, so let's start. <clears throat> All right, let's start with the bottom chord, easiest one, the one at the bottom, right? The one that has a cross section of that, two of them. So let's say bottom chord. Bottom chord. We've got two, four, six, eight, eight meters times two, which is of them 
times 20 kgs per meter and we get a value of 160 times 2 total weight 320 kgs one truss the bottom cord alone weighs 320 kgs that's our that's what i want you to understand all right now let's look at the top and side cords. All right, let's find the top. All right, top is equal to um, geometry. And now, how do I find the top? If I look at that triangle here, got an angle, we know this is eight. Basic geometry, we're looking at say cos 17 is equal to. 8,000 over our part news, and we're getting a value of 8365.5 millimeters. All right, that's our top. All right, we know this side is 0 0.6. All right, and if we take that across there, we've got 0 0.6 here. So to find that portion, easy enough. Right, here's our triangle for that. Now we just found that. We know this. So our um, theorem of Pythagoras will help us here. Looking at that, 8365.53 subtract 8000 squared, and we're getting a value of 2445.83. Plus, plus 0 0.6, and we're getting that there or that side equal to 3.05 meters. All right, now if we tally up side, side, and top, what do we get? 0 0.6 plus 8. Point uh, three seven plus zero point sorry three point zero five, and we get a total of twelve point oh two times eighteen kgs per meter, and we get a value of two one six point two eight kgs. All right, so we quantified the weight of that three hundred twenty. 216 is that, that, and that. What's your main? Bracing. All right. Notice how we broke everything down into the individual parts. All right. Let's do the bracing. And to make things easier, let's call this A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right. We already found that. That's not, that's a different shape. So it doesn't, we already found it. So we don't need to name it. Right now, let's look at this sketch. Can you find A? Can you find A? We know that's two. Do we know this angle? Do we know B? No, I don't think we can find A immediately. Let's try and find B. Because if you have B, we know this, then A would be easier, right? And what, I'm what am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because when it comes to quantifying this, it all boils down to pure geometry. You're welcome to use any method that you see fit to get the lengths and subsequently the weights. All right, let's look at it now, right? What are we trying to find? You said uh, A, not so quick, B, definitely. All right, let's look at B. And what do I do with B? How do I find B? All right. So if I know from there to there is 0 0.6, I need to find just that portion there, isn't it? And here's my triangle for it. I have an angle, I have it, and you automatically can see why B would be equal, easy to find. Let's see, 10 theta equal to x of two, and we find x is equal to 0 0.61. Therefore, B is equal to 0 0.6 plus, 0 0.61 and we're getting a value of 1.211 meters. Right now we can find A is equal to 
root two one squared plus two squared, and we find a as two point three four meters. And let's look at uh, C. C is that one. All right, C is that one. If we know B and we know that, then once again, theorem by Pythagoras comes in, root of uh, B squared plus two squared is equal to 1.211. And those of you a little quick, you realize this calculation has already been done. And what are you getting? 2.34 meters also. All right, let's find, let's find D. What is D? D is this guy, all right? So here's the, the new triangle now, from there, from there to there, we know that this is 0 0.6, and it's obvious what we're gonna be doing there. And then let's look at this as 10 to the, so four and X is equal to 1.3. Sorry, 1.22 plus the 0 0.6, we're moving from the edge and we're getting a value of 1.82 meters for D. All right, let's look at E. Can you find E? I don't think so. But we can't find F. Let's look, let's try F. And F is equal to 10 to the six. So we will do three plus seven, six is equal to two point four three. And we know that E is equal to G. All right. And let's use that what we found up there. And two point four B squared plus two squared. And we're getting three point one five meters. All right, now let's break that down, make things easier. All right, we know A is equal to 2.34, B is equal to 1.21, C is equal to 2.34 from A, um, D, D is equal to, And if we tell you all that, up you're going to be getting 16.44 at 8 kgs per meter, which is given. We get a total weight of 131.52 kgs. All right, so what have we done? We basically quantified all of that in terms of weight, all right? All of that in terms of weight times two and all of this in terms of weight. All right, so that basically covers all those items. Now, now, there's something else to consider. There's something called the gusset plates. All right, the gusset plates, which hold them all together. All right, now, if you look at the question, <clears throat> look at the question. Gusset detail one. All right. I've given you the dimensions. I have not given you the weight as I've done for all of these. The reason for this is because if I had to do all of these in a lecture, it's going to take me two to three lectures to do. I'm going to do one, and you will have to work yourself to find how those were right. Because if you know how to do this one, then these will all fall into place in terms of calculations. And the problem starts now for you, simply because this is quite tedious. It takes a long time because you need to find the area, subsequently the volume, all right? And that takes time because of the basic geometry. It doesn't get more complicated than this, trust me. So let's look at Gasset Detail 1. All 
All right, let's call it gusset detail. Details. All right, let's look at G, GD1. And we're given a figure like that. And we've got. Oh, excuse me. We have 250, 200. So I, I need you to find the area of that. All right, let's end. And one more thing. Where does it sit? Gusset detail one sits here. That's what it that, that that's what they're telling me. All right. So what is the angle of gusset detail one? 17 degrees. All right. Yeah, 17 degrees. So let's break this down. Let's call this A1 and let's call this A2. All right. All right, so I found the area of that, A1. What's A2? Okay, there's <clears throat> area total, addition of A1, A2, I got that. Now this is where you need to bring in the thickness as described in the example, 10 millimeters thick, all right? So 10 millimeters is actually 0 0.01 meters times seven, eight, five, zero. And that gives me, a weight of 3.18 kgs. All right, so when you come to these shapes here, you're gonna find area, then you're gonna multiply it by the thickness, by the constant for steel or density of steel to get each of these values here. Right. So that's basically how you quantify the gussets. Now let's put a weight to all the gussets. All right, now we found out GD1 is equal to 3.18 kgs. All right, now let's look at GD1. GD1 sits here. If I spin it around, won't GD1 also fit there? So how many GD1s do I need for this structure? I'm sure some of you will say we can put it here, but we've given a detail here as three, all right? You know what I'm getting at now. Three goes here, flip it around, it goes, it's gonna go there. So GD1, what's the factor there? Times two, and we're getting a value of 6.36 kg. All right, now you know where this is going, okay? GD. 
2. GD2 is given to us as 7.46. All right, now let's look at GD2, the location. GD2 sits there, where else can I use it? Can't I also use GD2 here? So what's the factor there? Also times two, and we're getting a value of 14.92 kgs, GD2. All right, moving on, GD3. GD3, where's this guy? Sits there, of course, we can use him here too. So the factor there of, uh, is also zero point, sorry, times two. And we're about to get 6.16 kg. All right, let's look at GD4. Given as uh, 6.09. And how many of them do we have for GD4? Where does GD4 say GD4? Hmm, there. All right, you can use one here. You can also use one there. So also times two and we're getting 12.18 kgs. All right, let's look at GD5. And GD5 is given as calculated already conveniently for six times. Now, where is GD5? GD5 sits here. Can it sit elsewhere? No, so the factor for that is going to be one and you're gonna be having 7.46 kg. Uh, I think GD6 is the last one, GD6. And where does GD6 sit? There. Now that goes there, that goes there. Is there anywhere else six can go? No. So the factor here, two, five, also one, and we're sitting with 3.25 as a kg. What is the total? What is the total? Total, tell you that up, you should get 50.33 kgs. All right, so in short, what have we just done? We basically found the weights found the weight of all, of all our components for this class. All right, so to end, total truss, the bottom chord, plus top, plus side, plus bracing, plus facet details. And we get a value of 320 plus 216.2, 1, 2, 8, plus what's this one? 131.52 plus 50.23. And it gives us a total of 718.08 kgs per truss. But the question says we have 13 of them. And if you multiply that, it comes to 9.33 tons. And what have we done? We basically quantified what 13 of these would weigh. Right, so let's end this example with a bill of quantities. All right, and putting all that we just calculated into a form that we are putting into our bill of quantities. All right, so let's look at the bill of quantities. Let's say B or Q.
Right, there you go. So you've taken each of those individual items, multiplied by a factor, and that should tally basically to 9.33. Now, how do we handle this bottom part? Sandblast to two and a half zinc coats. Uh, 2.5 is a standard, right? It's not a multiplication factor. So we've got that. Easy marks there. Shop prime with zinc galvanized, six shop prime, same tonnage that. Two coats, chlorinated rubber to be applied on the side, chlorinated rubber times two, I put in a factor there of two times that, and I've got that. And that basically gives us the bill of quantities for a typical steel structure. All right, now, as you've noticed, the most difficult thing and easiest place to get caught up and messed up is somewhere around here with the factors or your areas for these various shapes here, all right? But they're not too difficult because they're basic geometric, geometric shapes. All right, so that brings me to a complete example on steel structures. As you notice, not too 